Hello folks. In this video, I'll summarize lessons learned and remedies for integrating an Adafruit Feather Fauna with a tipping bucket rain gauge. In particular, I look at the use of interrupts for logging rain gauge tips for informing telemetry, and highlight some new challenges and improvements realized over one month of testing. As always, a link for the code for this project is available in the description of this video. This video builds on ideas shared in chapters 4, 19, and 21 of this playlist, so I recommend reviewing these first if you haven't already. If you're brand new to Arduino, I also have an introductory playlist that can get you up to speed from the point of view of someone brand new to electronics. The link for all these resources, again, is available in the description of this video. Remote monitoring and logging of rainfall data is important to the agency that I work for since it's critical for the evaluation of many of the best management practices that we support through the Clean Water Act. This data can also help me efficiently time stormwater sampling events so that I avoid wasted drives to remote locations. I'll again be using the Feather Fauna distributed by Adafruit, which is essentially an Arduino with an embedded cell phone. Initially, I'll try using one of the board's interrupt pins for incrementing a rainfall depth counter over time when triggered by a tipping bucket rain gauge. The Fona will send the accumulated depth to the Internet of Things website known as ThingSpeak, which will serve as my data logger while providing me with access to rainfall data from remote locations in real time. So here's the simple circuit I'll start out with. Essentially a read switch, as is commonly found in tipping bucket rain gauges, wired to the interrupt pin on my Feather Fona for tracking and incrementing total rainfall. The challenge with this straightforward approach is that read switches can realize electrical noise which may be registered as false tips, thus biasing my rainfall totals. As shared previously, this can be handled by programming a debounce filter in software or by creating a hardware filter using a resistor capacitor combination with a Schmidt trigger. Jeremy Bloom's Exploring Arduino book does an excellent job of explaining how to create an external hardware delay for remedying bounce, but you can also try a simpler software remedy that's summarized in chapter 21 of this playlist. Based on several weeks of testing, I feel more comfortable using a hardware approach, which seems to work better in avoiding false tips over time. I'll demonstrate this approach in the next few slides. Here's the original circuit I demonstrated in chapter 21 for filtering bounce and counting tips associated with read switches. To enable telemetry, I'll simply replace the Pro Trinket with the mentioned Feather Fona. Upon testing this circuit and approach, I started running into problems with missed tips. At times, the serial output associated with my program would show that tip side induced were not being registered, and then they would magically start to work before failing again. And then things started magically working again. I worked on this problem for several weeks, thinking there was something wrong with my soldering or maybe too much impedance in the stock wire between my rain gauge and the microcontroller. I checked all my connections, shortened my wires, reviewed my code line by line, but nothing really seemed to work. I finally came across a post on the web about how the software serial libraries sometimes used by Arduinos for communicating with sensors can temporarily disable interrupts. I recall that the libraries shared by Adafruit for communicating with the Fona relied on software serial and quickly realized that this was the reason as to why I was missing tips. Essentially because the interrupt pins sensitive to my rain gauge were being disabled when the Feather Fona was engaging software serial to talk to its modem. As such, it became evident that this approach wasn't gonna work. As per comments in the example sketches shared by Adafruit, I observed that hardware serial might be one way to mitigate this issue, but I had some trouble with the same. You can read the full thread on Adafruit's message board at the link provided in this video, but the bottom line was using hardware serial was not an option uh, with the Feather Fona form factor, but might work if I employed the Fona Mini GSM breakout board offered by Adafruit. This was challenging for me since I had already purchased, assembled, tested, and deployed a suite of remote environmental monitors using the Feather Fona form factor, so I'd have to come up with another alternative. In this context, I considered creating my own I2C compatible rain gauge sensor hooked up to a separate Arduino by using code I might find online, thus relieving me of all the issues associated with disabled interrupt pins. For starters, I found an excellent reference on YouTube that explained 
how I might get two Arduinos to talk to one another via I squared C. I successfully modified the sample code to get two pro trinkets to talk to one another with the slave transmitting data to the master associated with interrupt driven rain gauge tips. Using this approach, I should be able to wire my rain gauge to a pro trinket for counting tips and then have the pro trinket communicate its data to my feather phona over I squared C using the available SDA and SCL pins on respective boards. In this case, it would just be a matter of hooking up my original Pro Trinket rain gauge circuit to my Feather Fona so that each piece of hardware can do what it does best. I admit this is a complicated solution and note that Adafruit's mini cellular GSM breakout may work with the hardware serial alternative. However, I plan on eventually upgrading to the particle boron LTE form factor which can be integrated with my existing remote environmental monitoring boxes while also giving me the advantage of 4G communications should 2G ever be phased out. Given the similarly integrated nature of the particle board, using I squared C with a second microcontroller might help me head off problems in the future. So here's the circuit I'll test, which is conceptually identical to what is presented in the fritzing diagram I shared earlier. This particular presentation is using parts that were already soldered or mounted in my shop, so it may look a little different from the fritzing diagram, but it's essentially the same circuit. To make things a little easier to follow, here are the titles for the associated components. Including the two 10 kilo ohm pull-up resistors required by I squared C communication. And here's the start of my telemetry code already summarized in prior chapters, along with a few modifications to enable I squared C communication based on the code I found online borrowed from drone robot. The modification sets up an I squared C address for the pro trinket and a variable for capturing the size of the feedback that will be communicated via I squared C. I simplified my original code by creating a function called readParam that handles registration of all my sensor data and formation of my posting URL. This really helped condense my loop function into something that's easier to follow and read. You'll notice in my readParam function that I also reference a new getRangeSlave function. This function uses I squared C to initiate communication with my pro trinket from my feather phona. This function will call on the pro trinket to transmit the characters in the trinket's memory that are storing the rainfall totals and place them in a variable called my rain, which I can then incorporate into my posting URL for capture on ThingSpeak. And here's the code running simultaneously on the pro trinket. Here you can see that I've defined the Pro Trinket interrupt pin 3 as my rain pin, which will then be referenced by my interrupt code. When my rain pin goes high as a function of the associated read switch closing during a tip, that will cause this counting rain function to increment my rain total variable. Next, when data is requested by my phona via I squared C, the data associated with that rain total is forwarded back to the phona. My loop function doesn't really do anything since everything is driven by the interrupt function and data request events initiated by the feather phona. Okay, so I've had this running over the morning and you can see that I started it at about 10.55. This is what my serial terminal looks like right here. So you can see the posts that have been taking place. Oops. So there's one right there where the post was zero. There's another one, post is zero. There's another one where the post was zero. So it's working okay as far as uh, holding, uh, holding over time. So now the question is, what's gonna happen if I tip this thing five times? Come over here, one, two, three, four, five. And there's my latest post showing uh, five one hundredths of an inch. And here it is on ThingSpeak. It just posted just a few seconds ago. I'll try to catch this live on the next one. Okay, the phone came on and it's in GPRS mode. I haven't touched the rain gauge. It just shut down and there's my next post. All that data is essentially going to be uh, stored in the Pro Trinket and then 
communicated via I squared C to the phona for posting to the Internet of Things. Okay, software serial is currently communicating with the phona, so I'm going to try to register a few tips while that's going on. I'm going to go into GPRS mode any second now. There we go. It's reading the battery voltage, and yes, I did get the uh, additional tips. So if I look over here, there it is. And as you can see here, the results are holding over time. So I'd say that this was a pretty good test uh, to uh, get around these uh, ISR issues and interrupt pins being disabled. Okay, folks, so uh, yesterday afternoon, I gave it my last suite of tips at about 3.12 in the afternoon. And you can see here that it held pretty steady all night long until this morning when uh, I came into work uh, prior to leaving for a meeting and I tipped it a few more times, went to my meeting, held steady, came back, tipped it again. And uh, you can see that, uh, that I'm not getting any false tips here, that everything seems to be working uh, very well. It's registering tips when I execute them, even after long delays. So this mimics um, the kind of behavior that I would expect to see in the field. So this is very positive. I think I'm pretty close to being able to uh, build a prototype for field deployment. So again, based on this initial test, it looks like I have a worthy circuit and approach that can be used for field deployment. Of course, if we're going to deploy this system remotely, we'll need to wire it up to solar power with battery backup for long-term reporting. Details regarding how to build a weatherproof solar-powered enclosure are included in prior chapters available in the description of this video. So here's a summary of the wiring for powering the circuit, which has been field tested successfully. Although the solar-powered approach works, we have had some issues with humidity accumulating in our UL certified enclosures and damaging our electronics but I think I may be onto a solution that mirrors an approach used at the Walnut Gulch Experimental Watershed in Arizona, details of which I'll share in a future video. This is an exciting project for me, personally, in that logging rainfall to the Internet of Things from remote locations could have a significant impact on avoiding wasted field time visiting areas for sampling that might otherwise be dry. In addition to helping us save staff time and traffic, it can also reduce demand for fossil fuels, as well as contributions to NOx and greenhouse gas emissions. Having local and accurate rainfall data also helps us evaluate the impact of federal and state-funded best management practices, since rainfall is critical in driving the effectiveness of these investments in the Southwest. For these outcomes to be realized, I need to make sure that the data I'm collecting is valid. In this context, I plan on building a field-worthy prototype in my yard, which I can monitor and compare to readings from a Davis weather station already installed on site, and also compare to a precise analog gauge that can measure rainfall depth down to one hundredth of an inch. This is a work in progress, so if you're interested in seeing how this evolves over time, please subscribe for updates. Thanks for watching.